Hello and welcome to the Aiton Inquisition, where we spend a little bit of time getting to know the populace of the Kingdom of Aitonville. We're your hosts, Morgan and Elizabeth, King and Queen, during these weird times. And this <laughs> evening we have Master Sir Dom and Lady Ivor. Would you two care to introduce yourselves a little bit? Yeah, I'm Sir Domignev uh, Volkovic. I've been with the in the SCA since 2004. Started off with the College of St. Felix, moved more on to the barony, and then kingdom at large. <laughs> hey, hey, the Plurkin. You will hear me refer to him as the Wookiee if you follow me online and so forth. Um, I'm Lady Ivor. I am started with the college in about 2005, and then by the time I had finished my schooling, well, I'd kind of gotten married and bought a house. So behold, I've been in the barony. Darius Kathir and this wonderful kingdom of eight and belt since. Welcome. So then I take it that you found the, the SCA through the college. That is correct. I didn't actually. Um, so I grew up in Rhode Island in, in the kingdom of the East and what is the barony of the bridge. It is the only barony in the entirety of Rhode Island, which is not surprising when you consider Rhode Island size. But <laughs> I had worked um, some of the summers, I think it was like end of middle school, beginning of high school for the local library. And they did a summer reading program. And the end of season, like the end of summer festivities one year, it had been medieval themed and they had gotten the local barony um, to come and do a demo. And I thought that was fascinating. Like it was really cool. I, I'm a bit of a history nerd, all of that fun jazz. But my parents think thought it was an interesting hobby, but yeah, I'm not I'm not going to say, hey, can you drag me to these, you know, meetings, et cetera. I was shy, et cetera, and, you know, a bunch of stuff. And so when I decided U of A, I'm like, okay, wait, wait, now I can join the SCA. And this was several <laughs> years later. Found the College of St. Felix and you know, it sort of went from there. <laughs> All right. Yes. But yeah, so me, it was uh, September 2004, and I'm uh, dressed in, I think, uh, a geeky black t-shirt, black shorts, black backpack, <laughs> walking across the uh, U of A uh, the, uh, mall. It was, uh, the, uh, it was the club fair, and I just needed to get some food. So I'm just trying to like move from one side to the other to get, uh, get lunch before class. And then I see this... Uh, guy just like off the side of the table just doing this <laughs> i'm like who is that do i know this person and so i go over and then they had a little like small television playing a uh sca uh kind of uh intro like uh the uh, newcomer uh, video and they were having a uh demo on the mall in a couple days so i went to that but it was uh yeah, the guy that was at the table was uh, His Honorable Lord Fergus de Botha, patent pending. <laughs> I was going to ask yeah. you if that's who it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was just this like, I don't, like, do I know this person? Let me just go over there. And then that's how it all started. <laughs> was that the moment where you realized that you also knew Perrin or was that? No, that, that was at the demo. Okay, yeah, it was, yeah. So yeah, that was uh, when I went to the demo, that's when I saw Ivan for the first time in his leather lamellar armor and his brand new stainless steel helmet that he just got. Oh, <laughs> and they had their fighting demos. And then I saw the, oh, uh, then I saw Lady Perrin of the- uh, uh, Dona. Yeah, Dona Perrin. And I'm just like, haven't seen her in like six, seven years since we actually graduated high school together. <laughs> That's kind and of crazy. So, or not six, seven years. It was four years since I we graduated in 2000. <laughs> time. Time has yes. ceased to have any form of name right now. So really, I can't say anything. <laughs> and the, the funny part is Ivan was just telling us that he's getting ready to retire that helmet. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you had gone with Pear, and we have we have bad poetry of hers, which I have pulled out before, and I believe we've read to their son. So <laughs> I say, this is what your mom used to do. We have the proof. Very emo. Oh God, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's beautiful. Emo high school poetry. <laughs> I swear, if she 
ever gets gets a peerage, I am finding an excuse to pull that out at her at the vigil. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so, um, can you share with us a favorite story of yours from when you started playing? Go ahead. So. That requires me to actually recall one. Okay, then I'll. Okay, go. actually, all right, fine. Go for it. I, beaver. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so this was like my first Astraea, I think, maybe second. No, no, it was. Was it later? Uh, the beaver story is when Shanda got elevated. That's right. Nonetheless, it's a wonderful <laughs> story. So I had just kind of started acquiring fur, and I was like, okay, I have some projects planned and everything. And I had bought a lovely shaved beaver pelt and then spent like three days being going, behold, pet my shaved beaver. And um, young Willow was <laughs> not the brightest in some respects and still do not totally pick up on you in innuendo some days. Uh, so to this day, you know, a, a yeah, well over would... a decade later, he, he just teases me. Nonetheless, the pelt lives in the back and um, it's in the box with various and sundry <laughs> other things. But yes, it's a lovely shaved beaver pelt, which I have, I think the reason I haven't done anything with it is out of embarrassment. But yeah, it was, it was, I had gone to a few people and I'm like, <laughs> this! And I'm like, I'm like, oh God, oh God, oh God. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, probably be how I got introduced into Exchequer. <laughs> <laughs> Deputy or the actual role? <laughs> oh, that was for St. Felix. Oh, I was, right. went to my first heraldry hut at Mr. Mar Mistress Marta's. <laughs> and I'm there with the current, the, the time, the Seneschal of St. Felix. And they were trying, she was, uh, her boyfriend at the time was the exchequer. And he uh, was already graduated and he needed to step down and things like that. So she was just like, you're good with math, aren't you? Yes. I have a job for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it all went downhill there uh, then and then I pulled the same thing to Ivor when I graduated he graduated and he's like um I need someone to do this again young innocent naive it's like Ivor. I have a job for you <laughs> and he's like can you do this hey. it's really easy I'm like oh my that's better than how I got my first officer's job <laughs> this one came home from an officer's meeting saying hey by the way you're the waiver secretary now all I'm told. Because yes. you don't have to know about your warrant to have one. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> so, so yeah. Yeah, that was that was fun. <laughs> so when we've been doing these interviews, I found that everybody has like that one pivotal moment, that one something happened that made them realize that this is where they belong. Like the SCA was family and we and you belong there. So do you guys have that story? Me first. Okay, so for me, so it was just when I was kind of getting into uh, things. I mean, it was, I'd been exchequer for a while. I wanted to start getting into fighting. I was looking into armor. And so I ended up, uh, it was Astraea. I think it was, it was uh, Duke Edward's second reign. And so I, I've uh, just got my tax return and I'm just like, I'm going to use my tax return to buy armor. So I went to Merchants Row and uh, the, I think it was Strawberry Fields ended up guy, uh, buying uh, armor for uh, the, there, ordering it. They measured me and I go up to him like during, I think it was right before a vigil. And I was like, I just bought some armor. And then he just kind of put his uh, hand on my shoulder like, uh, and uh, made, with a big thump and just like, I will teach you to fight. <laughs> <laughs> And then it just kind of stuck there. It was just like, okay, let's let's go with this. And then I continue with Exchequer. I mean, we I was planning wedding at the time. Uh, fighting didn't really uh, the, happen for that time, just because I was the BT of uh, the Tereskathir Exchequer, and we were had an event every month. So therefore, it was like you gear up for the event, you run the event, you gear down, and now you're gearing back up for the next event. <laughs> Yep. And I didn't have a deputy, so therefore it was hard for me to actually fight during events. Yeah. And then I was also planning our wedding, so therefore it was just kind of like a little of the head, a lot of the hands flailing on that. And so it's like I just took a little bit of the, I took time off from fighting, but uh, 
people were still there when I uh, pretty much came back. And that's pretty much when I heard that, I was just kind of like, yeah, this is a place for me. I'm not sure it was, it was a very gradual thing. Um, realizing it, my, if I think about it, maybe the moment it solidified was this would have been the Southern Crusades the year before you propose the the Southern Crusades, the fall before you proposed. Um, because so we were up at Winkleman and I was hanging out around, I think it was one of the it was a torchlight tourney, and I got a call from my he was he was away because you were talking to Elsby at a found out later and I had gotten a call from my fam from my mother in Rhode Island to say hey the dog you grew up with and everything has passed away and he was he was poor and the nearest person that I kind of knew like decently was Lord Nicodemus and I just like bawled at Nico and it was just that moment afterwards realizing like, I don't have my, my blood family here, but I have people who care about me and who are going to, to take care of me. Um, and then it, it's continued uh, as, as that time has gone on. I have people here who, and you know, around who are like, yeah, really, what do you need? Let's talk about this. Um, even if I can't can't rely on what would traditionally be, you know, the support network of my family, because my extended family is respectively close, um, and I'm well the way out here. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, can you tell us about your personas and your heraldry? Um, at the time, so. I've kept my name. I bore Halter's daughter. I liked it. It worked about the same. It's like 10th century and I cannot think what country. I liked it. Um, I remember Marta telling me a herald will butcher your name absolutely any way that that you can imagine. And I went, okay, cool. I can I can do that. I've or worked. And oh, my father's name was was Hal and or Harold and Haldor's Haldor was the closest and so Haldor's daughter works uh my heraldry I came from Rhode Island you know what if we're, we're talking very you know oh here's all of this it's it's the story of my life at the time I liked simple I still like simple for that stuff I had come out to Arizona for uh racetrack industry I was planning on working in horse racing so <laughs> yes uh so i wanted a horse somehow because reasons and so and i came from rhode island so ocean so i was like let's do something blue at the top and so it just has a blue bar on the top and then a blue horse on it and it passed first round with no problem whatsoever which i have since learned is rather uncommon especially with for very popular charges like horses but I think at the time it was the only, one of only three blue horses like in the society. So it went through I, fast. I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, blue. Oh, blue horse. I was yes. gonna say, I have, I, have, I have horses on mine, but they're yes, not blue. Yes, you, you have gold horses. Yeah. yeah, I have just, so I have the blue one and then it's, it's um, the way it, it's blazoned on the uh, OP, I love because it looks like a very angry little horse. <laughs> or like is out like, <sighs> Um, so it's the angry horse and I love it. I love it to bits. Uh, and that, that's that. And even though most of my, like, I'm slowly circling right now, um, about 10th century, um, had to be height to boo, which is radically not what I was anticipating, but now I'm not going to bother changing my name. <laughs> like I'm this, <laughs> I'm Ivor, I'm Willow, which is what's on my driver's license. And Hey, you, it, it just, it works. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, for me, it was, I remember one uh, college meeting that we were having and it was like, oh, well, you have to pick a name. So it's like, okay, you have to pick a name because if you don't pick a name right away, people are just gonna start calling me whatever that they start 
calling you and they started giving out a story about like uh Torque boy, Tork boy which was a friend of the, of the people that were in the college of saint felix he's out in the west now but uh cap, but anyway hmm? what he was in no cap. okay no i'm thinking someone else you're thinking of the kiwi that's right <laughs> but uh yeah so i was told that so i started going through and that actually was the the same heraldry hut that i got constructed be an X checker. I'm going through <laughs> names and uh, things like that. It's like I found Dom and I was like, okay, D like D sounds good. So I started looking at D names. And then uh, it's like, I found one that looked like uh, interesting Dom I was like, yeah, that looks interesting. So it's like looked at the, uh, the pretty much time period there, which was like 11th century uh, Gaelic or something like that. And then it's like, okay, well, Let's go with the, of the a surname. So I was like, I like wolves. So I just kind of found something, and then it's like went with McFeltyarn, which is uh, like uh, which would be uh, Lord of Wolves. So I just like okay, let's go with that. So that's what I ended up going with that. And uh, heraldry, I didn't do. I didn't register a heraldry until like a year or so after that. I was at Australia, and I came with like. At the time, I was like. I'm just going to be drawing this thing. And it's like, yeah, it can't be blazoned. It's like this, but it looks cool. But no, it can't be blazoned. <laughs> I started, uh, the, so I spent time at Herald, uh, Heraldry Point, like I think a day just trying to come up with something. It's like, okay, well, Lord of Wolves. I like wolves. So let's put it like a wolf and I like blue, black and gold. So I ended up being with a gold wolf. And then I was also watching a lot of Dragon Ball Z at the time. So therefore it was like, okay, gold wolf. Super Saiyan, let's go with that. That somehow also explains <laughs> the moon, the deep presence on your, on your device. Please note, this is the first time I have heard this story in years of being together. That this explains the deep crescents as well. Seriously. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, so what with that I'm and surprised. Marta was also when she was doing some uh cross-checking she was surprised that like when we uh, actually got everything it's like this is pretty simple and there's nothing in like that actually conflicts at all <laughs> so we went with that and it got passed and uh yeah it's like the name there was only like a little slight difference in uh think like uh just a couple like uh letters in that be just to make more period correctness right but, yeah but then kind of went with that but then I started fighting, started fighting more in terms of uh, kind of doing a Russian persona. And it's like, I think it's a time to change my name, especially when I went out West. So the funny thing was, is as Will, uh, Ivor was saying that like, Harold's will uh, mangle your name and everyone called me Domnal. So that's what I always went by. Well, the correct pronunciation is Donald, the end was silent. <laughs> And so I'm in the West for a friend's elevation and I'm fighting in their tournament. And I'm just like, okay, I'm waiting for my to be to, uh, called up to the field and they pronounce my name right. <laughs> and so therefore they call it out and I'm, I don't pay heed. And then they call it out again. I don't pay heed. And so I had to go, I was like, is it spelled this way? Yes. Okay, I'll get my, I'll go get my helmet. <laughs> But it was like the only time I actually got pronounced correctly, and the uh, it was uh, it was uh, Master Baldrick is the one that actually told me the correct pronunciation of the name, like a couple years before that. <laughs> nice. But it was just like, oh, like that's how it's pronounced. It's like, well, like the M's silent, but everyone calls me Dom. I mean, that doesn't work, <laughs> right? It's not what I was after. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, okay, what with Russian? So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna find a Russian name. That starts with Dom. <laughs> so I kind of went through a couple names. I found a, a, a cool one that I, I like, but then I was turned off with the actual pronounce uh, with the actual translation of it. It was like I was looking at first Domash, but Domash uh, the, uh, like it just meant domestic, and I was like, oh, that's <laughs> don't want to be domestic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I found Domignev. Oh, the translation for that is angry home. Yep. I can go with that. <laughs> you know, I, I should interject at this moment because this is a side favorite story. 
if you are dating someone, and this is a, anyone who is new to the SCA, this is a story for you. If you are dating, if you decide you're going to date someone, make sure you find out their real name before you tell your parents. Yeah, that's the thing. Because, um, because I couldn't exactly inform my family that I was dating a guy named Dom. It just didn't <laughs> quite work. Uh, so consequently, I ended up getting his uh, real name off the back of his iPod classic because it was engraved there. But yes, yeah, yes, yeah, so just, just, yeah. By the way, we were actually dating for like a month and a half at that point. It was like, yeah, it was like, <laughs> this was not like, this was not like we had been dating for a couple of weeks. I could have asked at that point. At this point, we were, it was fairly respectable. And I, God, I think it might've been like right before Thanksgiving or something. Yeah, yeah we were going over to my dad's. Um, did he know your real name? And for like about six months into it, she was just like, I'm, I've been embarrassed to tell you, but I actually, this is how I learned your name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that was a wonderful moment. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I think that okay. actually crashed at your place by that point. Yeah. Because yeah, that was the night of, yeah. The joys of the SCA. Oh God. Yes. Oh but God. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So I went with Domignev, Angry Home. That seemed uh, fitting for at least a fighter at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well, the other, uh, my surname before was Lord of Wolves. So I went with Volkovit, which was Son of Wolves. So kind of just went with the whole like transition of still with Wolf, but. <laughs> well, and it, it helped you secure your heraldry. Yes. <laughs> and And now the heraldry is, you know, since it's great, you can kind of draw things however you want. Um, well. Yeah, the only thing that no one told me at the time was the direction of my wolf should have been the other direction because it's like on a shield, it's running away. So therefore, <laughs> I was told this like uh, the, by Baldrick after, like uh, the when he was told me the actual pronunciation, and he was like, why is your wolf facing that way? I'm like, because that's what I wanted at the time. It's like, but that has a meaning of this. It's like, oh, damn. <laughs> you know, that's something that would have been useful before I submitted it. Yes. <laughs> And it's like, that probably explains why there was no conflicts. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't have been a problem if you were a lesson. That's amazing. Uh, so, so clearly you, you're very accomplished. You've done a lot in a short period, but do you still have future goals? <laughs> wow. I'm just going to laugh here because the last few months have shown, oh, yes, there are still goals and plans. This is all you. Mm -hmm. Do you still have goals? Yeah. What do you mean? Okay, what, have, what, is <laughs> currently, yes, yeah. what is currently sitting on order from a company in Georgia? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm going into distilling now. <laughs> of course you are. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I'm getting a... 20 gallon copper still <laughs> set up. So therefore I can make with a single run, it can uh, essentially produce two to four gallons of like 150 proof. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not to mention we'll be able to do Before distillations Be for things like mead so we can control and we're not buying X. We're not doing the, okay, it's time to place the order to Apex. What do we need? Okay, cool. Yeah. So along with the gin basket that I'm getting along with that, so I can make gin, I can also make flavor extracts based on uh, certain things through uh, steam, uh, steam uh, the extraction. So now I know where I'm going for drinks. <laughs> she does well, like gin and tonics. That hopefully will come. So I should have uh, first run of the set for Australia. Excellent. Yep. Because it should show up around June or July, so I'll have a couple months to play around. Nice. And then he's also taken up glass blowing. Um, I am, have accepted that I need to really up my glass game. So I ha currently I purchased a master a major bench torch a couple of days ago. Uh, which is a giant beast. So I will be able to do more glass work at home. It's, it's also water cooled. Yes. Oh, the water cool. cooled. <laughs> yeah, it's, 
for anyone listening who's interested in such things, it is a, it is a Bethlehem burner um, or it's a Bethlehem PM 2D uh, double water cooled. So he stumbled across it on eBay and the person said it had been email, it had recently been refurbished since Bethlehem gives a lifetime warranty. So if you, yeah, if you send it to them, they will refer, they will clean it, get everything done. And on a whim, like he didn't have the serial number or anything, but he's like, I've got the info from Bethlehem and, and all that. And on a whim yesterday, I emailed Bethlehem and I said, hey, I just bought a torch off of eBay. If I, when I get it, give you the serial numbers or any chance, you know, you might be able to tell me a bit more about this. And I get a response back today that boils down to, oh yeah, totally. If you can send us photos, we might know as well. And I went, well, here's the listing. And I get a response back in about half an hour that says, Oh, yeah, totally know that torch. I was actually the one who took those photos. Here's what we did to it. Here are a couple of little quirks with it that you should keep an eye on. Oh, by the way, water cooling is not like really use it. This is no question. It's not an option. Yeah. Uh, like the, the outer flame is a little finicky, but the center flame is really good. It does run hot. Here's our recommending PSI. Here's what else to do. I'm like, any other questions you have, just contact us. I'm like, oh, thank God, because this was not cheap. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it was it was great. It's a discontinued model of theirs, but um, per a friend, it's also a type of torch where people who have it don't sell it. Like yeah. it is it is a workhorse. Um, I've shown a couple of friends videos of it, and they're like, "Oh, oh, of just just like it running through um gas, just uh, pre mixing and just showing the flame." And Duke Ed looks at it and goes, "I'd be scared to have that in my house." I'm like, well. Good thing it's not in yours, it's in mine. <laughs> yeah. Just need a fire extinguisher. Yeah. 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 We Always actually, on hand. <laughs> well, it just means we have to now start keeping one out in the Arizona room. Safety third. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Drink. Yes, totally. So um, what <clears throat> jobs or projects have you done in your past that you are particularly proud of? I am ridiculously proud of all of the hand, so of the entire hand sewn outfit that I did uh, for Kingdom ANS. This would have been 2019. You should be. It was beautiful. Thank you. I have since I realized um, pretty soon afterward. It's current. The overdress is currently in pieces because I have to redo all of the pleating on it. I had uh, decided to reverse engineer the pleating without actually reading up enough because you know why not that's how we do hello yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so so there are several people of did you actually read how to do this um, including by laurel going you know people who do smocking you could ask it was like what's the fun <laughs> in that exactly um where's like, the journey right journeys <laughs> for other people this, this is this is why i currently have a 14th century set that's currently sitting there and and i learned a lot which is I may have also bought a bunch of proper supplies for the next hand sewn project, which mm -hmm. is in pieces right now because reasons. Uh, between that and then I'm still ridiculously fond of the pendants that I did for the the last crown tourney. Me too. On sort turns, yeah. And I've done, I've been doing more of them, uh, more pendants lately, uh, mostly modern glass um, because I have realized that double helix makes phenomenal reductive glass and I like metallic. <laughs> so like I have all of this period stuff I need to do. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm just gonna make I'm just gonna make pendants that will make me happy. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, it's been good. All right. You? Yeah. For me it would be at least for art wise, mm -hmm. there is always the belt I did for you, uh the, your majesty, uh for your uh for one of uh, the first rain or so was it the second? Second. Second, second. rain. Sorry, I'm gonna pull Yeah, I love that belt and how that turned out. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> and the masterwork I uh, the, did for my uh, the Plurican elevation, that trim, uh, the, I uh, lo loved how that turned out. Beer wise, I mean, 
my peanut butter milk stout still that I did for uh, one of the uh, Kingdom Twelve Nights. That uh, way, like the way I infused the uh, peanut butter flavor, I uh, the, really uh, the, was proud on how that turned out. And then now it's just I'm starting to getting into glass uh, the glass blowing, so it's now I'm just I'm trying to perfect that. And it's like the one of the last uh, cups I made, even though it has imperfections and it has a hole in it. It's still, oh, actually, it's still my it's right favorite whole, uh, favorite, my, uh, my favorite club. It's actually uh, really cool. Yeah, it's just the whole thing is it's like, okay, well, it cooled a little bit too much. And when I got put into reheating, I heard or if there was a crack heard. And it's like, okay, let's just continue this on, see how this goes and healed all the, uh, healed all the cracks except for the hole. It smoothed out the hole and then it's like, okay, it's a dribble glass. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so yes. It's a trick cup. It just has, it's like, there's a hole right there. Yep. <laughs> awesome. So it's like, okay, don't, don't fill it past that hole. Otherwise it's just going to start coming out. Mm -hmm. So if, if you guys stumbled upon something in your time in the SCA that isn't necessarily the path that you thought you were on that you figured out that you actually love. For, I mean, Like clothing, I didn't expect I would enjoy quite as much as I, I genuinely do. I spent a long time, I started loving glass. I then did not do it for probably a good, what, eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And then a couple of years ago, he was like, okay, we have a glass school in Tucson. Let me get birthday classes. And so I did that and then I, I've gotten more into it and it's really, especially in the last like six months or so, has reached a point where I'm like, yeah, this is non-negotiable. I really need to, to get stuff put in um, at home so I'm not constantly traveling there. And don't get me wrong, I love Sonoran Glass. I cannot recommend them enough. Even when I, even when everything here is set up, I will still go there on a regular basis, but it's it's given me an interesting outlet for a bunch of stuff and then i didn't expect to enjoy null bending but god knows i've been teaching it at astraya now for a while and it's resulted in the fiber stash that's made me say um <laughs> i really need to find something that'll use this faster than null bending so consequently i've taken up knitting i have a bunch of period stuff for it i just haven't gotten around to it um, I'm probably going to knit stockings from my 14th century. Um, I think most of the patterns from uh, Jose are a little later. But man, I'm going to do knitted knee high socks because why not? And I have the right <laughs> wool for it. Or I have a wool I like for it. So yeah, it, it's a bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's not where I thought I would be, but wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, for me, I mean, I was. I mean, I was in the, I pretty much when I started getting more serious, that's essentially when I started fighting again. It was like, I mean, I was doing Exchequer for years. I liked it. I mean, I was doing it because it was needed and I was good at it, but I was never really going for Pelican. I was just doing it because it was needed. And then I was like, okay, I'm fighting. I was going, pursuing knighthood. And then it's like, oh yeah, it'd be, the funny thing is, is like one one uh, trip back from like Champion the Pines with uh, Sir Wolfgrim, and there was just a, a conversation we had. I was like, it would be really cool if I got uh, the if I got uh, double elevated. And my thought was uh, Pelican and Knight at the time. <laughs> <laughs> just like, oh yeah, double elevated because we were saying it's like, oh yeah, Duke Edward. I mean, it's like he was uh, the pretty much crown and uh, the knight right at the same time. So it was like kind of the same thing as we were uh, kind of doing a comparison. So it was just like, oh, that'd be really cool. And then, I mean, I was doing art because I needed something to do and it was something to keep my mind. I mean, it was never really artistic or thought of myself as artistic. I was just, just wanted to do something that just do with my hands. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, I mean, I started off with weaving and then I stopped it. It just it wasn't making sense at the time. And then it was like one, one of the night or so. I go over to Ivor and I'm just like, 
since she did a little bit of inkle at the time. It's like, oh, can you explain tablet weaving to me again? And she explains that and then it just clicks into my head. <laughs> Actually, I think the way it went was you turned, you rolled over, looked at me and said, can you explain tablet weave? Can you explain S and Z tablet weave? And I was like, here's a copy of Collingwood's techniques of tablet weaving half at. <laughs> Nonetheless. Well, it, it stands to reason you like math, so. Yeah, and that's pretty much as once it clicked is like, okay, this is just medieval programming. Yep. <laughs> So I went I with that God, and- could swing a jack card move, I would so do that. <laughs> but anyway, what, I need someone to program it. I'm not that good. Yeah, so it was kind of that as like, and took a class from uh, Duke Ivan at uh, Collegium and it was a make and take that he actually made all the looms for the class as well. Of course he did. <laughs> Ivan, what do you expect? It was my loner loom uh, that I gave out to people for a while until uh, yeah, I think it, uh, broke under tension with uh from uh demetrius <laughs> happens yeah so what's something that you would like to try that you haven't had a chance to try just yet oh uh, that i'm not sure i mean the recent i mean the that was kind of gone it was the glass blowing so i started into that in the last since december so, I mean, it's only been like, yeah, three months. So I'm trying that now. So I'm kind of getting into that, but that's, <laughs> other than that, I mean, full, uh, kind of a full blown uh, floor loom, maybe for weaving larger fabrics and such. You do realize I own a warp weighted. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the downside of course is warp weighted requires warping and those are, she says, maybe when we clear out the hours in a room, it'll live. <laughs> <laughs> There's no space for it right now. Half the house is like in flux. Um, yeah, I want to try a bit of casting. Um, I've done it in an academic setting, but not in like years. I'd like, so I'd like to try some of that. Um, I already have the supplies, so it should be easy enough. I can always wander over to my Laurel's house and be like, hi! let's talk um which is how a lot of a lot of my relationship with Duchess Yonka works a little less now in the pandemic when I can't go um can I come over to your place and like scream and cry at you for a few minutes for like half an hour they live right around the corner from us <laughs> like it's, it's go out our house go down the street go over and then like two more turns it works so but yeah so I'm like I would like to try some things again, like like casting, but I think for the moment my my plate is sort of full. Let let's focus on a couple of things. So mm. probably molded glass, um, blowing, soft uh, glass. There's like some Egyptian perfume bottles, which I could probably no. I'm just gonna buy a hollow bead tour hollow bead. Uh, Re, uh blow pipe and be like let's do this <laughs> so i'm i'm lazy yeah it's like i mean for glass blowing in that i mean i want to get into also mold uh molded uh blown glass which is uh molded blown cups is the next class i'm taking in two weeks <laughs> <laughs> yep but it's like i want to start maybe like designing some molds uh through uh through my computer and uh putting it through my cnc just to kind of get that going and see how that works as well. Very cool. So what are you known for? Um, I'm right now probably most known for routinely teaching null bending and hopefully I'm getting to know, <laughs> be known a little more for glass. Uh, I, for again, particularly period stuff, I'm, I have some plans for things that really I don't think many people in the SCA are making right now, or at least not many that I know of, uh, which are honking big mosaic beads um, that you find in a bunch of Scandinavian stuff. They're big and kind of gaudy and look absolutely awesome. And my Laurel loathes them and but says that if I do make them, she may wear one. Nice. Oh yeah, I'm that totally, sounds I'm like totally you throwing to Yonka under the bus. <laughs> I was gonna say you have to make them now. Yeah, dude, I have to do them in like 
blue in in like not blue uh black red and white because it's her colors yeah there but there are period there's a f- drawing of one in calmer uh calmer's uh scandinavian bead trade that has little suns on it i'm like this is amazing <laughs> but it requires me to get to make uh millifiore and Gerg to make cane and god i hate pulling stringers but i'm going to have to like force myself to get better at this and well, what well, luck, I may just have bought a hecking, a honking big torch. <laughs> so I really have absolutely no excuse for this at this point. Unless I build a furnace in the backyard. Yes. If I, build, I have plans for a tiny little bead, for a small bead furnace based off of one at Ride. I'm sorry. This is my total like, geek right now. So I'm That's going, the whole point. I know. <laughs> but I just can't. Anyway. Um, yeah, I could. Ooh, I wonder how doing, but I wonder how doing. Um, cane on the uh rice on the ride furnace would be because ooh this would be fascinating mm-hmm. i should I, and i do have to remember to check on that because uh master Tariq is curious how that would run anyway mm-hmm. <laughs> i like glass i like glass a lot i really <laughs> <laughs> there's been a lot of squeeing over it lately like look at this uh and the realization that oh my god wait if we have this at home i have no i have all of the excuse in the world to go hey you know what i'm buying like 60 pounds of glass right now because i can use it i guess for me would be liquid hospitality (laughs) not a bad way to put it (laughs) bad way to put it I mean, there's that. I mean, exchequer, just guy with numbers beat people, uh, numbers out of people. <laughs> and then there's just the beating. <laughs> so what advice would you give to a brand new member? Try anything and don't commit. And by that, what I mean is if there's something that kind of interests you even a little bit, give it a shot. You're gonna, you may like it, you may not like it. Don't commit to things like a relationship with a peer, um, at least, you know, for your first couple of years. Don't commit to that. Don't go, okay, I want to learn this. I'm suddenly going to purchase everything for it. And then realize that you absolutely hate it. The SCA has a lot to offer. And I think it's really easy to get overwhelmed by it all. I mean, you see people who are like, well, I've done this and this and this and this. Like, no, no, my experience, like don't look at us, for example, and say, well, I'm new and I wanna be exactly like that. Like, no, that way lies madness and pain and frustration. Take some time, get your feet under you find you know what you like find if there's anything that brings you great joy if there's anything that you're like eh, i'm not really sure on be kind and be kind to yourself like don't you don't want to get so involved and so deep in it and so crazy that you are going to burn out very fast um because i think that's easy and and god knows look at look at esca and right now where it's just a little bit, but now you're you have a glut of things that you can do. Like, okay, <laughs> it's fine to say I'm not that no, let me take the time. So yeah, um, try everything, but don't don't necessarily commit to it immediately. Yeah, to go along with that, yeah. Try, fail. It's okay to fail. <laughs> That's the big thing. Absolutely. Failure is fine if you don't like it you don't think it's for you that is also totally fine who knows you may come back to it a decade later and decide this is awesome you just think, need that time i don't think you can actually learn stuff without failing yeah. exactly. oh, God. and that's the whole thing is like i mean like when i started off with weaving i was like this i wasn't good at it and i put it away and then it's like okay let's revisit it and then it's just it clicked in my head <laughs> Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's fail. Fail is the uh, big thing. And uh, for burnout in that is if something stops becoming fun, that's probably you're getting close to burnout or you're already there. <laughs> yeah. And that's when the whole thing of like, find a way out at that point. So it's like, if you're an officer, 
as stops becoming fun, mention it to your uh, the commanding officer or the uh, Seneschal or b, b or Crown or whatever and find a replacement. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. exactly. It's like, if you start not liking what you're doing, then you're gonna start making mistakes and then you're gonna really can screw things over. <laughs> yep. So who, who inspires you? I swear to God, if you say me, I am going to stick <laughs> a hug on Now you. he has to. No, no, he doesn't. Oh, well, okay. Hold on, wait. I have no pug I can stick on him right now. One is down there. The other two are sleeping. Damn, I can't do this. Um, I like you can take it. Someone other than me. I love you, nerd. Um, to do the cliche thing, which I'm now not allowing him to do, I... Uh, Duchess Yanka, I, I love her. She is one of my my dearest friends. Uh, she is my Laurel and has been for you know years at this point. I <laughs> I just love the yeah. Let's give everything a shot. And and we've both grown quite a bit during the course of our relationship. So it's nice to have that kind of like wait. <laughs> you're sane. You're good. Um, you, you have tried quite a bit. You you are very willing to go, hey, yeah, let's try this. Or no, I have no idea what this is. Um, you know, here's maybe someone you can talk to. So yeah. She is one of my favorite people and remain will remain one of my favorite people. Thanks. Yeah. For me, I've worked. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, it's, oh, come here. Come here. Other come on, than uh, attack, other than my come wife, come on. Oh. I'd actually probably say His Royal Highness uh, oh. Oliver Zipster. Just the way that he kind of portrays himself and laid back, and then just just kind of goes with the flow. Because that's usually what I like to do as well, and just get things done. <laughs> He's a good one. Yeah. What's your favorite tradition? No, nope, no, nope, you, 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 you were, you were destined with pug. <sighs> I told you I would. Fine. Um, welcome to life with pugs. Uh, they, they sort of take over everything. So, favorite tradition. A few day might night must slumber and relay. Maybe <laughs> tentacles having nasty dreams or having scary dreams. Uh, Not sure. I will ha always have a soft spot for the fact that innate velvet cell. It is screwy by large portions of the rest of the society, but I I, I have a soft spot for it. Um, it's one of my favorite parts in in that that coronation process or ceremony rather. Otherwise, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, for me, it probably is the sword oath before uh, pretty much uh, taking the field for crown. It just always uh, gets me motivated and sets my mind straight and realizing like how heavy everything is just in terms of that. Yeah. I could agree with you on that. It's a very heavy moment. So what what is your favorite event? My favorite event is a tourist event, God Awful Grail. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it is, I mean, for non-knights, it's a time to shine. showcase and shine, and it's fighting for a god awful ugly cup. <laughs> immortalized on your pelic on your plurican scroll above our <laughs> tv right now <laughs> and it's just it's it's just a lot of fun i mean it's uh like i also started to a tradition after i won it uh the, while i was uh the, before i got knighted and uh i actually ran the tournament the next year and i also made the beer <laughs> because i started uh, i started making the god awful ale it was an orange colored oatmeal white stout. 
And then so therefore, yeah, a, a, co a coffee, a coffee, a coffee stout, oatmeal coffee stout. It's a wonderful beer. So therefore, if you did a blind taste test, it would taste uh, the mouthfeel tasted like a coffee stout, and uh, the flavor wise. But then you look at it, it's it's bright orange. And then we upped it the next of uh, a couple years after that and started adding uh, gold edible of uh, the luster dust. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, it is Yanka. Yanka hates the god awful Grail. Um, but, the boys are very happy with it, especially because you and Ivan have hideous tunics. And then also, since I continued with making the actual god awful ale each year, now there's something else for uh, the knights to do: drink and watch uh, the watch the non belts fight. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I love the two wise dragon sword. Like I really do. I'm not, it just, it's an event that makes me happy. Um, watching, I, I've seen so many variations from monster fights to just the, the dragon fights. There's something absolutely gleeful about um, watching, like, like even with the, the youth, just <laughs> get some boffers go out and hit a bunch of knights and watching the knights die dramatically. It, it's, it's always a really nice, laid back, fun event. Oh, and I, I just, I yeah. love it. It was actually my first event. Uh, like it was a two day event and I was my, was only able to make the Sunday. So I ended up going there for my first event for like half the day. And then after that was Southern Crusades was my real first of like a big event. I but really uh, yeah, no, Southern at Winkle. but it's like, Back old days of Dragon Sword, there was also another aspect that was fun to go along with the playing. There was, you got to uh, oh, essentially God. there was the selling of cherries to give to people. So therefore, that declares a virgin for the sacrifice for the dragon. <laughs> we have a wonderful photo of a friend of ours looking abs, looking so sulky. Most As of the he's time, draped in it. Most of the time, it was our actual premier, uh, a premier glory of the chivalry. That was the virgin. <laughs> yes, many years. Okay. I love it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then we absurped him for uh, the, with uh, Lord Nicodemus one year, and we bought all the uh, cherries. cherries for him. <laughs> I have some photos somewhere of, of Nico with that veil draped in cherries, and I also have him just a boar's sitting. head cod piece as well, a boar's skull cod piece. <laughs> he looks so, but he's just like. It's that wonderful look of I'm going to kill you. And I've called it out. I've called it out at times. <laughs> Again, that is a photo where if that man ever gets a peerage, I am dragging out copies of it and being like, I love you. <laughs> I'm fucking print it on a cake. But yes, but it was like the virgin was who the person that won the tournament had to fight for because you had the first day tournament <laughs> and whoever won that got a free fight with the dragon. And that was the first uh, fight. But then they had to actually protect the virgin sacrifice. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite out of kingdom event? I haven't really been to many out of kingdom. I mean, I've been to Penzik. Uh, I love the concept of like Birka Khan, Birka, and that's on the list of events I really want to go to. So we'll, we'll say, Birka is my aspirational right now. I, I like the event at the end of January hold up, you know, the whole at the, you know, hold up in a hotel in, in New England. I've heard it's a wonderful event. I, again, I really would like to go at some point. It would be, a, I'm sure my family would be thrilled because it would mean I would be in sort of that neck of the woods. Or you go without them knowing and then they just curse you after. <laughs> this is also a possibility but you do know my family and you know that the guilt that comes with me going like i couldn't live with the guilt that's why you just take your phone away and you can't post anything so firstly, <laughs> most of them are not on social media that we'd be good there but we also know i'm i'm like tethered to my phone mostly so yeah. it'd be really hard yeah so for me i mean the I've only made it to about half a dozen out of kingdom events, but I mean, the mo main mm -hmm. one was uh, like, I was at SCA 50 year, which was an interesting experience. Uh, Penzik, 
was uh, pretty much is my favorite. That's the one I've been to the most out of Kingdom. And then I've been to Golf once and then uh, West Crown and a couple other uh, out of Kingdom crowns. So my yeah, favorite is probably yeah, Penzik. Kind of, I think, built, were you at Beltane? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that earlier question when I asked you what your goals were, yeah. that should be a goal is to get to it more is. out of Kingdom events. Mm -hmm. yes. There's so much fun to be had out, out of Kingdom. Like, not that we don't have fun in Kingdom, but... Yeah. No, but getting to travel and you get to experience other stuff. I, we were talking about at one point um, coinciding because we want to go back to, to Europe, seeing if we can line that trip up with what, Double War? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Out there? Because, I mean, we're going back to Canada. We were, like, when we were there, we were, we left the week before they started. <laughs> oh, so close. <laughs> so close. Yeah, and the same thing is like, uh, like I tried to make it to Sport of Kings the last time they had it, but I couldn't convince work to just divert my flight because I was in Vancouver, BC, and Lions Gate oh. at their practice for the week, uh, two weeks prior to that, and then I was going back the weekend of Sport of Kings. Okay, if it and I just was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm like, can I just like go from Vancouver to Portland and then? Portland to uh, back to Tucson there's like no okay so honestly Ugh. if that happens again I don't <laughs> care tell them buy you a one-way ticket <laughs> and then we will pay for you to hit I, I actually uh had my work divert my flight one time because I had a a big management meeting in Salt Lake City and then it was uh Talon Crescent it was yeah. right right when we won our first crown mm -hmm. it was the next weekend yeah <laughs> and so I went from that management meeting and she drove up with some friends and I met her at the event. <laughs> oh, perfect. You know, seriously. Yeah, it's like I had all my armor and that was uh, there. It was oh, that just... would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah. But That's I could have been, I uh, haven't been to yet that I want to go to. Yeah. Sport of Kings is definitely on my list. Yeah. I, I'd really like to as well. But, you know, if you yeah, were in that like neck I, of the woods, I would stay home and become the. Yeah, it's like I want to hit Sport of Kings. I want to hit West on Tier War. Yes. Because I would love to hit Cooks, and I still need Can't to. Care. I still uh, need to hit Battle more. Yep. <laughs> it's just never actually like coincide with uh, free time at the time <laughs> when it was yeah. like around. It was like the year that I would have been able to go is when they moved the dates. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. So we're gonna get a little heavy with the question now. Uh, what does being a peer mean to you? I recuse myself from it. <laughs> oh no, I get to answer too. I <laughs> actually, I actually love what what non peers answer it because it lets us know what we should be living up to. <laughs> For me, it's being the example, being uh, just the example of what people should strive to be, and kind of just not. I mean, it's not. It's hard at times, but not falter. <laughs> and at least not falter in public. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, just to be able to guide the future generation just kind of be better people and let the society grow and just become better. I think it's, I think it's helpful to remember we're allowed to fail. It's what we do when we fail. Yes. It's how we recover. Mm -hmm. Exactly. None of us, we're, None of us are infallible. No. So I think that I'm trying to think how to how to word this. Because <laughs> um, I, I have some very complicated thoughts on peerages and it, it relates very heavily to my own path and my own issues and struggles and, and so forth. But those are very deeply are personal and to set those aside because God no, do not um do not go down the realm of of mine, which is me, which is pain and frustration. I I think that with with peerage, it's for a long time I thought that it was kind of you'd meant you'd reached the top of the game and you had won, so to speak. And 
you know, it's something aspirational, but it's not really, it's aspirational. It's not attainable. And as I've gotten to know more peers, as I've watched people I know well, um, and I care about become elevated and I have spoken with them extensively. It's, it is still that, that aspirational thing, but, it, but peers are, <sighs> peers are the people who have, who can fail the best, I guess you could put it. And I don't mean that as when you fail, you fail big, but more as they're people who can look at stuff and can settle it and can put it together and say, listen, I have failed, but here's how I learned. And let me teach you about my failure. Uh, and so that you can learn from it and maybe you make the same mistakes, but that's okay. Let's, let's talk about it. I don't know if that made any sense whatsoever. <laughs> But yeah, I think that it is definitely aspirational and it's something I think that is is good a good goal to strive towards, but you can't you can't make it the be all and end all. And I think that very successful peers, um, because I will to be blunt, there are some people I look at, and I'm like, like seriously? Um, which is I understand as well as just general human nature, but there are some people you look at and you're like, okay, you're all kinds of awesome. To quote the rules, which if you, you will frequently hear Raffenheim say, don't look like ass, don't make your crown kingdom, et cetera, look like ass. <laughs> don't be that guy, be that guy. Like they are the people who are that guy. Not perfect necessarily, but but the ones you can look at and go like, they they manage to to do it, like they're they're good, um, and you can and and they they'll and if you talk to them they'll be like and here's all of the mistakes I've made, let me tell you about them. <laughs> uh, those have been some of my favorite conversations with peers. Like yeah no no this was a mistake this was a total mistake, and I, I get better versions of those with with peers than with. Uh, non-peers as a very general rule of thumb. I have rambled. I don't even know if I made sense for most of it. <laughs> so Don, I have a question specifically for you. Okay. Um, so you were elevated to two peerages at once, which as far as I know, had not happened here before. So my question to you is, was there additional pressure on you would you say, because you were being elevated twice on one day? There was in, I mean, for me also was at the time, I wasn't considering myself laurel material, even though I was offered. So I was kind of, right. doing, I was having a bunch of imposter, uh, the imposter syndrome at the time. And I've just like, never really, it's like, it wasn't something I was going for. And so therefore there was a lot of pressure on that to like, okay, now I have to up my game <laughs> yeah, because I was just like, I thought I was just doing the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah. And so there, there was a lot of pressure on that because it's like, okay, I'm still doing X checker. I'm still helping here, but then it's like, okay, now I have to actually think of how I can, I can move forward the arts. <laughs> and so that was a lot of, contemplation and just kind of uh, late night thoughts just to kind of wrap my head around a that. A lot of talk. If, if I may be blunt, I think it was also a bit, I remember driving home with you from that event and you just, I'm like, do you want me to drive home? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> and you were just in shock. <laughs> Good 24 hours at least. Like I don't, I'm trying to remember if you drove back up to the second day of the no. event. Okay, yeah, we oh, did. No, uh, the, no, I drove up with Ivan. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan right, you drove, had, right. I was a passenger right, to right. fight. <laughs> right, because we had, we had canceled the hotel room that night because whatever. 
Um, and yeah, I remember you being that. And I, and I remember that you were being that it was, it was a lot for you because you were a squire at the time. And so you were like, this is not, the, the the laurel threw you <laughs> because you're like the pelican I knew would be an eventual thing uh, but I'm going for night and is going for she says uh, having Branton on stuff anyway you 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 were on a night's path and you it, it was it was very interesting living with him through that and I don't mean that in any <laughs> bad way more as a it was it was interesting for Coming me to, to watch that yes <laughs> yes there, there was a lot of that um but yeah i mean that's what i would say the pretty much extra pressure was at least for me mm -hmm. yeah oh, I, I can imagine because i mean i can even remember when i got knighted that i felt that pressure that i i needed to be better yeah you know that's probably why i don't ever stop training <laughs> so i can just imagine having the weight of two peerages at the same time would be that much worse. Yeah, I mean, there was that. And then the other pressure was there was a, another group that was trying to get me, uh, trying to get uh, Alan on to give me all three. <laughs> there was the people like, oh, just do all three. And that, that would have just blown my mind. And I would have, I might have actually burnt out pretty quickly at that point. I actually, that would have. <laughs> I could see that. You know, and that's, I think sometimes people don't realize that you can do more damage than good sometimes. Yeah. Like, I, I think that the way that all of that played out was wonderful. Like, and I'm, this is me looking at it as from your, as your spouse, my, of any photo, any memories, any what have you, um, for either of us that I love the most is your your nighting that 11 months later there are some wonderful photos that got taken um of him and and, and Duchess Yanka and those are some of my absolute favorite shots there's there's those and there's the one of me with my arms around you as I'm like bent down those are for all that i will tease inter intermittently yanka and and ed over that because please note i had bought fabric for his vigil tunic like three years earlier <laughs> and i had specifically told ed i will kill you if there is not a vigil um and as yanka puts it i did You're this still living I'm afraid. I, I am but, but, afraid. But, but, let's be honest. You could still have a vigil. Yeah. I, I am had a vigil so after the fact. Yeah. yeah. We, we've now determined. He's like, and we've now reached a point where it's like, should I just use this? He's like, no, keep it for you eventually. And and now I'm now I'm now I'm starting to do the batch. Of, do I like save it for something or do I just say screw it all and do it? It's a very nice antique linen I had bought from. From, from Scott and the Broshka of Feed the Ravens. And it's great. And I had told Ed, like, I will kill you if I do not get this. I had told Yanka, I will kill Ed if this does not happen. Um, and Ed being Ed just laughed and was like, you really think I have control on this? <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. And Yanka, Yanka has, well, when I mentioned it to her these days, is like, no, really, you were so stressed over his, pel his blur kit, saved you. It's like, yes, I'm aware you did, but that doesn't mean I like it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we, we I now have some some fabric that some very nice antique linen, which he says he's never seen, but he actually moved it when we swapped where my workroom was. No, you know, yes, you no could record. always make something for yourself out of it. Yeah, save it for your yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my We're yeah, he he keeps telling me that, and I keep going into the wonderful land of self doubt. Nope, that's not happening for a while, and the fabric's sitting in my stash, burning a hole. It burned for three years, so burned it's a, a slow, a slow burn. Point. Yeah, <laughs> burned for longer at this point. <laughs> I don't even know which drawer it's in. She lied. Yeah, she but that's like I remember the Plurican offer, and it was like I just got done with. I think it was like Twin Moons book review. <laughs> because <laughs> I was doing that book review because uh, 
Master Finner said that he couldn't do it because he was told he needed to be in court uh, at uh, court. So I was like, okay, I'll do this. So I was actually was assuming he was uh, going to be getting offered. Yes. And, <laughs> and so it's like, I get done. And then it's like, I still have the bag. I'm handing it over to him, telling him about the book review. And that's when they started talking about uh, like Pel uh, calling the Pelicans up. It's like, okay, now it's going to happen. Perfect. And then they called the Laurels up and it's like, okay, well, this doesn't that's make weird. sense. <laughs> uh, like, are they offering a couple? <laughs> right. And then they called my name. And then the next thing I know, I can only hear my feet going forward as she's pulling me, uh, yeah, he, pulling he, me forward. Yeah, he pretty much stalled. I remember grabbing the rest of the stuff out of your hands and like <laughs> handing it to Finner and then dragging you up and then like slipping over the side. And I, I think I think it was Samara who was like, nope, you're here next to him. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> oh God, that was... Thank God. For our friends and our household, I am eternally grateful <laughs> <laughs> that you all managed that. Um, far better. I, I have aspirations of being far more organizational than I actually am, or far <laughs> more organized than I actually am. I become a little ball of stress and anxiety. <sighs> Apologies, there was a pug down here and, and he is demanding attention. So, you know, <laughs> we're, we're really not gonna say no to the butterball of joy. <laughs> so we've actually hit the end of all of our questions for you guys tonight. Is there anything else that you wanted to add before we go? I can't think of anything. I really can't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Well, it's been delightful getting to spend some time and get to know you two a little better. Yep. Thank you for spending the evening with us. Yeah, thank you Our for pleasure. having us. Children. Let's see if I can figure this out. <laughs> <laughs>